Hello, everyone. It's good to be with you again. This is Geraldine Wilkins, the Living Water Quilter. Okay. I got some echo going on here. Let me fix that. Okay, unpin. All right, ladies. Sorry about that echo. I'm going to get rid of that right now. Okay, here we go. Whew. How's everyone tonight? Hi, Copper. Hello, Benita. Yay, so glad you're here. Greetings from Miami. Hello. Rog, how do you pronounce your name? I don't want to do a bad job. Ragoth, 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 is that correct? Thank you for joining us tonight. So glad to be here. How was your week? Did you have a good week? The week flew by for me. I am doing my favorite thing to do every year, and that's taxes. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> All right, Janice, I'm so glad you're here. Fantastic. And there's Jody. Hello. Good afternoon. And Suzanne is back. Hello, hello. Who is ready for spring? I am ready for spring. I don't know where you are in the world, but um, you may have spring already in other parts of the world, but here in the U.S., we're still in winter. Jackie, hello. Jackie from Texas. I'm so glad you're here. If you were here last week, remember we talked about taffy candy and we looked at one way that it was quilted and I teased you with what we were going to do this week. We're going to go over taffy candy. Hello, Cassandra. So glad you're here. Connecticut, Colorado, Kentucky, Miami. Spring does mean lots of rain. What's the temperature there in Miami? It's probably warmer than Virginia and Colorado. The cold states, we are ready for spring. Marlene, hello. So glad you're here. I have a treat for you ladies. I know that we've been playing Jeopardy, uh, but we're going to try something new. But I want you to know that tomorrow, is the first day of spring, March 20th. Woohoo! Yes. So, have you been in those cold states? Are the birds coming out? Are the trees budding? Hello, Sherry. Nice to have you with us. Awesome. 52 degrees. That's not too bad for Colorado Springs. Is that a normal temperature? You're ready for spring, Suzanne? I know I am. Yep, robins are out, the birds. I have a lot of robins in my, my area. I saw a beautiful cardinal the other day, a male. You know that just rich, rich red color they have? 46 in Pennsylvania, okay. Well, we are going to play quilt bingo. So go get some paper. Get some paper and a pen. It's going to be a little bit different. You are going to get a piece of paper and you're going to draw a four by four grid. Four by four grid. Uh, 89 Fahrenheit. Ooh, that's nice. Nice weather. Not too hot, but not. Hello from Canada. Hello. Hi. How are you? Awesome. So get your paper. 
and pen and you're going to draw a grid. You're going to draw a grid that's four by four. And you're going to do it by drawing three lines horizontal and then three lines vertical. That will give you a four by four grid for our quilt bingo. When I reveal the game, it's going to automatically reveal one square. And it's going to reveal either a quilt tool, a quilt block, or a quilting technique. And if you have done that, if you've done the quilting technique, if you've made the quilt block, or if you have that quilt, quilt tool, you're going to put an X. That's right. You're going to make this grid four by four, three lines horizontal, three lines vertical. And then I'm going to ask a series of questions. And the questions are going to be, do you have this quilt tool? Have you made this quilt block? And if the answer is yes, you put an X over that box. If the, the first person to get four in a row, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, wins. All right, so we are going to get started. Let me know that you're ready by commenting yes in hello in Georgia. Chiquita in Georgia, welcome. So glad you're here. Uh, what else? Let's see. If you are ready to play, you have your paper, you've made a four by four grid, say yes. All right. Yes, yes. Awesome. All right. Sherry, everybody's ready. Okay, we are going to get started. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to... All right. Quilt bingo. Now you have to pay attention because they're going to come up quickly. You have about 10 seconds between each reveal. All right, here we go. Here is the first one. Here it is. All right, it's coming. Have you made a mini quilt? And a mini quilt would be a quilt that's smaller than, say, 20 inches by 20 inches. Have you quilted with a walking foot? Have you finished a project with a walking foot? Have you ever made a queen, a king size quilt? If you say yes to these questions, you're going to put an X. Have you ever made a quilt block bigger than 15 inches? Put an X. Have you made a quilt block called card trick? If you're saying yes, then you put an X. Have you made the maple leaf block? Put a X. Have you made the log cabin block? We're getting a lot of yeses. All right, put an X. Do you own a ruler foot for your machine? Have you ever made a crazy quilt? Have you made a pineapple quilt block? All right, we're almost there. Do you own a pair, a pair of applique scissors? How are you ladies doing? Have you ever made an art quilt? Something that you hang on the wall. Have you 
Have you ever finished a quilt with free motion quilting? Do we have anyone with bingo yet? Have you ever done a hand applique where you stitch the applique by hand? Not good. Uh-oh. What's what does that mean? Bingo! Somebody has bingo. Fabulous. Congratulations. Have you ever made a jelly roll race quilt? Congratulations. Bingo. Another bingo. All right. Jackie, two. Bingo. <laughs> I'm glad you ladies enjoyed that. So how many of those quilt blocks? There's the pineapple block, the card trick block, log cabin, maple leaf block. Have you made all of those blocks before? Is there one that you haven't made that you would like to try? Write it in the comments. Enjoyed that copper? Yay, that was fun, right? <laughs> Congratulations to all those who got bingo. Awesome. So that was a little different, right? I thought that was fun. And I'm glad it was fun for you. All right, Cassandra got bingo. Yes. Is there anything in this that you haven't tried that you would like to try? A king size quilt is pretty big, right? Suzanne got bingo too. Awesome. Yay. No way. You haven't made a maple leaf? That's I think you need to make one. You only have two X's. Well, you know what that means? That means that you have a lot of fun ahead of you. There are different things that you have that you, on this list that you can do. Put them on your to-do list. You too, Suzanne, you've never made the maple leaf block? All right. <laughs> you ladies are funny. And Bonita, yep, ruler foot. Need to get that. Hey, Lois, I'm glad you made it. Sorry you missed the game. We'll play again uh, next week, I guess. I didn't make two games. I only made one. That's right. Now you know your next project. Awesome. Okay, well, let's move on. This is the quilt we're going to talk about today. You never made a crazy quilt or a midi quilt. All right, well, put that on the list, Copper. We are going to look at this version of Taffy Candy. This is the, I call the rainbow version. And I purposely quilted this one different to expand the texture in the quilt. And so we're going to talk about all the different textures that are created in this quilt with thread, with stitching style, and with batting. Thank you, Copper. You like this quilt? Awesome. Let's go first and look at it up close. Look at that awesome texture. How is that created? You see thread texture. You see batting texture. You'll have to quilt the bucket, okay? <laughs> I'm going to move comments over here now. All right. Okay, so there's decorative stitching. There's free motion quilting. And there's batting, but you can also create texture by not quilting. Do you notice the areas that are not quilted? Thank you, Benita. Thank you so much. 
Remember a couple of Fridays we t- ago, we talked about the bear claw. If you haven't seen that live session, it's still on YouTube. You can go and take a look at it. In that session, we talked about how I used one pattern multiple times in different quilts. And this is another example. I used bear claw in that very, very narrow area in the quilt block. The red stitching is a decorative stitch on my machine. That just makes a statement with the red. So there's color, there's texture, and a combination of the two. But look how that bare claw just really stands out in terms of the texture. And that's also added texture because of the batting. So let's look at my process for this. When we do decorative stitching, we have to put something on the bottom of the fabric, a stabilizer, so that the decorative stitching remains consistent and even, right? I decided that I needed to one test what decorative stitching I was going to use and the thread weight. I didn't want it to be too heavy or thick. I wanted it to be distinct. And so usually I will use a 60 weight thread for decorative stitching, especially if there's multiple stitches. Okay, did you have to use stabilizer underneath the red X's? Good question. Normally you do. Instead of using a stabilizer, the traditional way, a thin, I used batting to help stabilize it. Okay, um, and I'll show you that in the next picture. But here I tested the decorative stitch and the length based on where it was going to be placed in the quilt. So sometimes you can't just start quilting on the actual quilt. You have to test. Just like you practice your free motion quilting on a sandwich, you want to test and practice your decorative stitching or any other technique before you go to the actual quilt. Okay, so here is the batting on the back. This is what it looks like on the back. So the decorative stitching was done on one layer of batting with no backing fabric. Have you ever done a technique like this before? Have you heard of this type of technique before? Write a comment. Let us know if you've used this before. Once all the decorative stitching was placed. I did a stitch in a ditch around the quilt blocks. Once that was done, then a quarter inch of batting was left just outside that stitching to give a quarter inch of batting all the way around the edge of that stitch in the ditch. Can you see it in the lower part of the frame? Okay, never seen it before. All right, nope, you haven't seen it before. Okay, this is the first time. Thank you, Copper. It's it's experimenting and trying new things whenever we can, right? So, if you see that little bit of quarter inch batting, that makes sure that all the batting that is behind the decorative stitching and behind the quilt blocks stays in place and that it doesn't shrink in to the quilt after it's finished. All right, so once that's done, now I can layer the top that now has decorative stitching secured with one layer of batting on the quilt blocks only. Now I take another layer of batting, and I think I use wool batting, 
to complete the quilt. Let's see. Uh, yeah. All right. Now, I think we need to talk a little bit about batting and batting selection. Never did this before. Why would we choose one batting over another? Why do you choose batting? Is it because of the natural fibers? Is it because of the density of quilting that you want to create or the lack of density? You don't want dense quilting. You want very loose quilting. Um, is it for warmth? Why do you choose batting? Did you use any special way of securing the red thread? I'm not sure what you mean. Just regular decorative stitching. And I would, I just laid the batting down enough to cover the quilt blocks. And then I just quilted the batting or stitch the batting to the quilt top only over with the decorative uh, stitching. So that's the first step. The decorative stitching, the X's are, are secured to the quilt top with batting. The batting was basically the stabilizer. Securing the start and stop of the thread. Ah, okay. Now I understand. Whenever I do something like this, I always have a long tail in the beginning and a long tail at the end. And I will not end bury the thread. I'm not... Some people will just lock the stitch and cut it. I want to know that I know that it is knotted and buried and will not come apart. So that's what I did. Like a locking stitch, okay. You can do a locking stitch. It's it's your personal preference. Okay, so just to re-clarify, oh, you're welcome, Copper. Decorative stitching was selected first and I tested the decorative stitching and the thread, what weight thread was going to work best for what I wanted to do, what width and size of stitching for that decorative stitching, all tested ahead of time. Once that was done, I stitched and secured the decorative stitching to the top only. And I did that with, instead of the traditional stabilizer, I used batting, a low loft cotton batting. Okay, now, why do I choose a particular type of batting? I did a test many years ago. October 30th, 2014 is when it was on my blog. We're on my blog right now. And I recommend you do a similar test so that you know why and you choose a particular batting. And I use Quilter's Dream batting. Quilter's Dream has a huge selection of batting types. And they have, I think, three or four different types of loft. Let me see. Uh, they have a low loft, mid loft, and a high loft. So I decided that I was going to test. What could I get using various types of batting? when I quilted a certain way. If I quilted densely, if I quilted very loose, or if I quilted with medium stitching. So here's an example where we have in this blog post, I recommend you go take a look at it because it gives you all the details of how I ran this test. I use batik fabric, I use several different types of batting, all from Quilter's Dream, and I quilted three different types. Did I baste? Yes, I did uh, spray baste the batting. Yes, I did bury the threads. Yep. When I did the decorative stitching. 
Look at the difference between the cotton batting and the dream puff batting in these two examples. Same quilting pattern, but very different effect, right? So I used several different battings and I quilted them three different ways. Here's another example of the way I quilted the same fabric, but in different ways with more quilting, with medium quilting, and with heavy quilting. How did it feel? What does the end result? You want a packet of, of green batting and you put it in the quilt? Okay. And it was puffy and you liked it. That's a great way of, of testing batting is when you get something free, that's great. All right, what I want to do now is switch quickly over to, so this is my blog post and you can get more details about how I did this test. You might want to run this kind of test for yourself and you end up with a little book of samples so that you can choose for later projects, what batting you want. And I put the insert in with the book and I have a nice little binding of Quilter's Dream information based on my test. And I'm gonna show you that real quickly here right now. I'm gonna to go to the next one. There we go. So this is the sample book that I made. And it has the information that you get from Quilter's Dream. This is a 70 cotton, 30 poly. It's a cotton blend. And then it tells you, and I love Quilter's Dream. The information is just so clear and concise about what you can accomplish with this particular type of batting. It tells you you can stitch up to 12 inches apart and it still remains soft. Why would you wanna quilt something where the stitches are 12 inches apart? Can you think of a scenario where you might wanna do that? It could be that you're making a memory quilt a memory quilt where you've taken photos, you put them on fabric, but you don't want to stitch over the face. So you want to be able to get a batting where you don't have to stitch over the face. And that means you can do a stitch that creates a frame around each photo. That's one example. And so in this, I created three different types of quilting. This very loose quilting, then medium quilting, and then some very heavy quilting on the same batting. Yeah, that big X over someone's face would not be good, exactly. So you wanna learn about batting so that you can get the batting that suits your project. Why else would you want to learn about batting? It could be that someone you know is allergic to synthetic fibers that you're making a quilt for, or they're allergic to natural fibers. Then there are some instances where you wanna use a batting that has um, the ability to be fused and they have a fusible batting. And with this batting, it still can remain soft and you can stitch up to eight inches. Instead of 10 inches, it's eight inches. No more than eight inches apart. The other thing you wanna consider, I don't know if you've noticed, the type might be too small, but it also tells you how much the batting will shrink after washing. In my examples, they were all washed. 
so that I could see how much they shrank and what they looked like after washing. Look at the dream puff. Good point. Uh -huh. Okay, the dream puff, it says you can stitch up to 10 inches apart. So, so far we've seen three different battings. One where you can stitch 12 inches apart, 10 inches apart, 8 inches apart but they all give a different result. And some are natural fibers, some are synthetic, and some are blends, cotton blends, but the shrinkage also will be different. If you don't want a lot of sh shrinkage, meaning that it doesn't start to draw in after it's washed and dried, then you would find the batting that works best for that. Look at the texture and the softness that this Dream Puff has. You can just see that and feel it. It's very different from, let's see. This is a cotton batting. Okay, look at the flatness of the cotton. Now look at the dream puff. What a difference. What a difference. And even though it has this heavier quilting, it's still very soft. Very soft and appealing. What is your favorite batting? Have you tried other types of batting? What a difference batting can make in the look of your project. See how flat this cotton batting looks? And this is something that you may want. You may not want it to be puffy. You may want a nice flat look compared to, say, this one. Look at the dimension. You've only really used cotton. You want to try wool. That's a great idea. What would happen if you if there was more than 10 inches apart with stitching? The reason why they give that minimum distance, if it says 10 inches, 12 inches, whatever it says, that's the minimum distance. You don't want to go beyond that. If you go wider, you risk the batting bunching up underneath or becoming destabilized. Okay, you like to use Hobbs 8020. Yes, awesome. Make a book. And of course, it doesn't have to be as big as mine. But just make sure that you have it. Remember in school when we had our science experiments and we had our control, we had everything exactly the same, used the same fabric, washed them the same way, dry them the same way so that you get a true uh, result that you, that you really can compare, put it that way. I found cotton is kind of heavy. Mm-hmm. Cotton is very heavy. Some will prefer wool batting because you get the warmth and it, it breathes, but it's not very heavy. Especially if you're making a large quilt. Like my friend Wilda, she made a, a quilt as a gift for a friend wedding. It was a huge quilt bed quilt. I forget if it was a king size, but she chose wool because she knew the cotton would be too heavy. And I made a, a king's, queen size quilt for my mom and I used cotton. Oh my, was that quilt heavy. Your favorite is, is wool, but it can be pricey. That's true. Quilter's Dream, I think, has been one of the most reasonably priced battings that I've come across. 
What I do want to show you also, if you haven't been to the Quilter's Dream website, I would encourage you to go there. Because whether you like Hobbs or any other brand, Quilter's Dream has tremendous information for their batting. It's very clear, it's easy to find, and you saw it with my book, I had the actual sheet that came with it. So you can save that, hole punch it, and put it inside a binder. Even if you don't make the samples, at least you would have that information handy. Look at all the different types of batting that you can select. There's poly, there's poly cotton blend, and then they also have different lofts. They have thin loft, a mid loft for almost all of them. And guess what? Did you see this? Request a sample to try their batting. Have you ever asked for a sample? If you haven't, they are a fantastic company. I've been um, fortunate enough to get to know them over the years. And whenever I say, hey, can I get some samples? They send them right away. Okay. Yes, Sherry, I've tried bamboo. I, I like it. I tried the, um, who made the bamboo? I forget the company now. I used to get it at one of the craft stores here in town, but it, it went out of business and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but I did, and I liked it. It was fairly thin, very, very low loft. Um, and it seemed okay for, for, for the purpose I used it for. A few quilts are flat, and I don't like it. I would like to try a high loft batting next time. Great. You just try these things one at a time. You know, you saw my blog post. I tried that experiment with the batting, you know, more than five years ago. And so you just try a little bit at a time. Try something different when you can and it's not important in terms of who you're gifting it to. Uh, and then let's see, cotton takes a long time to dry. Poly doesn't take as long to dry. Um, so anyway, let's go back to Quilter's Dreams website and let's click on, let's see, their cotton. Click on that. They give you information about the how it's made. They tell you the sizes that are available. Uh, let's see. What else is on here? I thought there was more on that. I missed... Okay, let's try their dream puff. Okay, there you go. Dream puff is luscious light batting. It's resilience loft one th third of an inch. Um, dream puff is one and a half times warmer than down and almost twice as warm as a high loft polyester batting, let's see. It adds volume and definition, which we saw that in my quilt. Um, it's great for trapunto and faux trapunto. So anyway, I'm not gonna read through all this. This is just to say, go there and learn about what different types of batting can do for your project if you haven't already. You can put that on your list. Okay. So I like my little sample book. And on my blog post, I show you how I did these rings. And put in these little holes here so that I can make this. That means that I can add a new one whenever I, whenever I need to. When I make more samples, I just add the extra samples.
and then each one has a regular um, loose leaf sleeve with the Quilter's Dream information for that particular batting. Okay. I have had this for years and I love having this as a, a sample. Okay, so any more question? Tuscany. That's, um, I think, a Hobbs wool, a Tuscany wool. I've tried that one and I like it. Um, okay. Any other questions about batting before I move on to the final two stages in this quilt taffy candy? You notice that I, so far, have added texture with decorative stitching in the colored sections of the quilt block, the ones that have the yellow, blue, and green fabric. I also added texture by having double batting behind the quilt blocks only. Hello, Amanda. I'm so glad you're here. Yay. Echo quilting. All right. That copper, you just reminded me that I wanted to show this to you. I'm going to go back a step. Look at the bottom part of this photo. You can see along the edge of the block a quarter inch echo. Do you see that quarter inch echo? I did that all the way around because remember, after I stitch the batting, the first layer of batting that's behind the blocks only, and it was secured with the decorative stitching, I stitched in the ditch around all the blocks and left a quarter inch of batting along the edge. Must make one of your sample books awesome. Yep, make one for yourself. Awesome. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Who notices that echo around the quilt block? It's in the lower part of the photo. That was one of the first things that I did after stitching in the ditch. Remember last week, Whenever I have bias seams, I do some stitch in a ditch to secure, stabilize those seams. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Since we have that quarter inch of batting just past that stitch in a ditch that's all the way around the, the quilt, you can do, which is what I did, a quarter inch echo all the way around to define those quilt blocks. Yes, a quarter inch and then a half inch echo. Exactly. And that half inch echo, I think, is important to the overall design because it helps define not only the quilt blocks, but it defines now the free motion quilting that's going to happen around the quilt blocks. Okay, you got that. Janice says, if you use cotton batting for the stitch batting, will it affect the quilt if you use Dream Puff? I'm not sure what, what you're asking. If you use a cotton batting for the stitch batting, will it affect the quilt if you use Dream Puff? Are you talking about layering the two quilts together, or the, the two layers of batting together? Will it have a different effect? If you're talking about double layers of batting, Normally, when I use double layers, I'll have 
a cotton, thin cotton on the bottom and dream puff or wool on the top. The decorative stitching. Okay. Well, the decorative stitching, the batting for that could have been dream puff. It didn't have to be cotton. And it, it would have had um, maybe a puffier effect. I'm not sure because I haven't, I don't know that I tested that with it. I'm sure it would be fine. It may be just be a different look or it might be very similar. Um, I love the idea of the sample book. It looks like a good way to practice stitching. Perfect melody. Exactly. Ladies, our schedules are busy and we need to multi triple task. So whenever I do a project like this, I also incorporate some techniques that I need to learn or practice. Even for the cover for this book, I'll go back to it real quickly. Even this cover was, you know what? I need to try, can I free motion quilt letters in cursive? That was, me to, that was for me to practice. And this was before um, ruler quilting. And I marked this and quilted this. I wanted to try this idea of creating squares on top of squares and overlapping. This was another thing that I practiced to make the cover. So everything that we do can be a form of practice. Yes, you can use scraps. Okay, let me go back. Uh, yes, okay. All right, awesome. I like, Copper says, I like how the half inch echo separates the free motion stitching from the blocks, yes. Often when I echo, I will echo twice to make sure I get that definition. Sometimes one echo is not enough. Okay, what's the last thing? We did the decorative stitching. We talked about bare claw. We looked at um, the dots and swirls is the background quilting. This is another video and I'm on my YouTube channel. Go to the playlist and you can get bare claws video and also the dots and swirls that was added. And the dots vary in size based on your own preference. They can be very similar in size or they can vary. And usually a variation is better. Then I added a little pop of color. One of the design techniques is to repeat a shape within a quilt project or repeat a color theme. So as you notice, my accent color is what? What is my accent color in this quilt? It's still the same quilt taffy candy, but I said I want to increase the thread texture in this project. And I'm going to use decorative stitching. I'm going to use free motion quilting. And I'm going to use color with thread to make yes. Red is the accent color. I did not use a template for the circles in this case. This is freehand. But you could. That's something you might want to put on your list, Copper. You can try that. You can pre-quilt circles onto the quilt and then stitch around them so that you can get a consistent size circle if you want. Red is the accent color, exactly, Cassandra. So I said, why not put a pop of red in the background? Well, they're not really perfect. If you took a, 
perfect circle and put it over, you would see how imperfect they are. Um, but you know, it's always practice, practice, practice. They might look perfect, but they are not. <laughs> Thank you, Copper. So that pop of red, dots and swirls. Dots and swirls, again, like, the bear claw is one of my favorite techniques, and I use this particular pattern over and over again. Okay, this is the last part of the quilt. We've double batted behind the blocks. We put decorative stitching. How do we continue that texture theme? The binding has decorative stitching. Have you tried decorative stitching in your binding? Say yes. Let me know if you've tried decorative stitching. So Copper says, I think the red decorative color on the blue and white quilt, if you want to make it patriotic. Yep, you can definitely do that. You can use whatever theme you want. It could be a gift for someone who's graduating from from school and you want to use the school colors. Red against a very cream color, it's very daring. You know, often we want to stay safe and use thread that blends. The thread the color red Let's see, what does it say here? Um, love the color difference. Thanks, Suzanne. Yep. You never even thought of decorative stitch for the binding. And notice that I picked a, a decorative stitch that you won't see it from across the room. It's very subtle, it's light. It's a light decorative stitch compared to the decorative stitch that's on the quilt blocks, right? But again, you wanna test. All right, I'm so glad you ladies want to try it. Let me know what technique that I've shared tonight that you wanna try in your quilt. Okay. Is the stitching on the border a blanket stitch? It probably is, Evan, but I don't remember the name, but it probably is. And I probably elongated it so that it wouldn't um, be too close together. The other idea in choosing this particular pattern was that it did not have to be uniform. Sometimes with decorative stitching, if it's poorly done or if you have a problem while you're stitching, say you're trying to make hearts or something, and if it doesn't stitch perfectly, you will see that it doesn't look right. But with this kind of pattern, you wouldn't know if the stitching is off a little bit. With a few extra red stitches in the binding, I would be it would be great for a baseball theme quilt. Okay. All right. Any other questions? What technique would you like to use in your quilt? Are you going to use a technique? Let's do some questions here. Um See if we can get this running. All right, save, all right. There we go. Do you plan to use any of the techniques we've talked about tonight in your quilt project? Decorative stitching in the binding? Are you gonna try a different batting? Or are you going to try using two layers of batting?
Awesome, Cassandra. You're going to try the decorative stitching as a stabilizer for the batting, with the batting as a stabilizer. Wonderful. Echo quilting to set the raw edge applique apart from the free motion. Fantastic, Copper. Mm -hmm. Sherry wants to try the decorative stitching. Fun, ladies. All these different techniques can be combined, or you can just use one and maybe one, maybe two, maybe two at the most. Decorative stitching and free motion, or decorative stitching and walking foot. When I first started quilting, I did a lot of decorative stitching with walking foot quilting because I wasn't very good at free motion quilting. Lois, you'd like to try a free motion pattern. Okay. Great. Dots and swirls. Lois, you want to try that? You want to try a different color in the background? A little pop of color, not just only blending with the background, but something to give a little bit of color. Bonita, you're going to try... Decorative stitching on the binding. Fantastic. So it sounds like a lot of this has been in, inspiring. You Are you inspired? Working with a walking foot. Fabulous, Sherry. Last week, the, the taffy candy that I showed you, the first one, was partly quilted with rulers and then partly quilted with the walking foot. If you missed that session last week, go take a look at it because in it, I talk about other techniques, which reminds me, I think Copper, you asked, what was the length of these rulers? This one by Quilter's Rule is 12 inches, 12 inches. And this one is 13 inches by Westerly Design. So this one is slightly longer. You can see that a little bit longer. You asked about that copper. And then someone asked when I mentioned how do you lubricate thread? I use when you can have thread that's breaking. It could be a needle, it could be that has a burr on it and you have to put a new needle in. It could be that your stitch plate has a, a burr or you have the wrong size needle, but also your thread can be uh, dry, that it's lost, lost all its moisture. And so sometimes I use Sower's Aid. Have you ever used Sower's Aid? If you've never heard of this or seen it, go to my playlist and look up uh, video shorts or machine quilting tips. I show a video on how to apply quilters aid, I mean, sewer's aid to your thread. So go to Living Water Quilter YouTube channel, go to the playlist, and look for machine quilting tips. It's a video short, it's less than one minute, and I show you how to apply sewer's aid to thread. Okay? Um, I think I, cause I went back and I looked at some of the questions from last week to see which ones I missed. And so one was the length of the rulers. How do you lubricate thread? That was Nora. I don't think Nora is here tonight, but hopefully she'll watch this on the replay and she'll get the answer to her question. Okay. And, and yeah, Nora also asked about, um, if she could that she's new. Nora said that she's new and she's never made a quilt before. And so I wanted to encourage her to try. And I think Copper, you did that. And we should be encouraging one another. And I appreciate all you ladies coming tonight. It's been an hour already. I can't believe it. It's just been fun. Thank you for joining me again. We've had a really, really fun time tonight. 
And I'm so glad tomorrow is spring. Tomorrow is spring. Okay, what is that now? Beginner as a machine quilt. To love the idea of using decorative stitches with a walking foot. I've used sewer's aid when sewing clothing. Okay, so you know all about it. Yes, time does fly, Copper. I'm so glad so many of you have been inspired and that you're going to try some of these techniques and that you're going to make your batting book slowly. You can It could be a year-long or two-year-long project as you get new or different types of batting. Set some aside so that you can test it and keep it inside a book. Thank you, Sherry. You're welcome. You're welcome. Awesome. I'm so glad this was a good session for so many of you. Love the butterflies. Yes, it's spring. Thank you for coming, Bernita. All right, ladies. Have a wonderful weekend. Sew if you can. If you can't, think about sewing. Dream about sewing. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye now. See you next week. <laughs>